medical minute about pediatric injuries to the wrist. Uh, I don't know if you know, but there's something called the Ottawa ankle rules, the Ottawa knee rules, and those are basically specific rules or guidelines of when you should and should not order an x-ray of an extremity. What they try to do is come up with what signs and symptoms should you look for, and if positive, then you do an x-ray. If negative, you don't do them. Then they do a validation study where they say, okay, we, we're going to use the rules to see if we would have missed something, and they find out, well, the miss rate is 2%, but when we do miss something, then it's only this many out of so many and they weren't clinically significant. So they try to do the same thing for pediatric wrist injuries, which is always kind of hard because pediatrics uh, are, are hard to do because the exam is less reliable than an adult and number two because they have growth plates. So we can never say never in terms of fracture. Actually there's an adage in medicine that says kids don't sprain, they break. So if they have tenderness or pain over an extremity, you should always treat them like a fracture. Having said that, in Amsterdam, they came up with the pediatric wrist rules. And essentially, if they have focal tenderness or palpation of the distal radius, obviously if they have a deformity, if they have pain over the anatomical snuff box, if they have swelling over the area, or painful supination, bring the hand like so, and those are the, the findings. So any of those positives, then you do an x-ray. Uh, all of them negative, then you don't have to do an x-ray. So that's their rule. What was their validation? Well, they followed up 170 kids and they decided, do we do an X or do we not? And according to the rule, they would have done it or they wouldn't have done it. And then they do the X-ray anyway to see how many they would have missed. They would have missed seven out of 170. Uh, but they were buccal fractures, which are non-displaced kind of small compressions and one distal radius fracture in an older kid. So having said that, this is the United States, not Amsterdam. And here the, um, how tolerable it is to miss any fracture is much lower than in other countries. Obviously a buccal fracture, there's no damage done if we miss it, but it's going to be a pretty mad upset parent if we do. My way of thinking in the emergency department, if a, if a patient shows up for an extremity injury, you need to do the x-ray, period, because how could you not? Uh, if they have multiple injuries, let's say the kid has a wrist and a knee and an ankle, then you don't want to x-ray everything, and then you can use these rules to kind of guide which extremity you do actually which one you don't having said that in a kid they all, they sprain they don't break so remember that and that's why we almost always splint and we always tell them the speech that you need to follow up with orthopedics and that kind of a thing so the amsterdam pediatric wrist rules that's it